Let's appreciate him for this opportunity. Let's thank him for the grace to see this glorious day. Let's thank him for his faithfulness from January to date. Let's go ahead and begin to appreciate him. Let's go ahead and begin to appreciate the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the one who was, the one who is, the one who is to come. He has been there for us. He has been our shield. He has been our buckler. He has been our strength. Mm. He has been supporting us. Mm. I hope mm. you can hear me, ma. Yes, we can hear you. Perfectly, ma. Shed God, let's go ahead and begin to give God thanks. Let's give him thanks. Let's say, Father, we give you thanks. We thank you for this opportunity. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for grace. Thank you for provision. Thank you for the vision. Thank you for your support. Let's go ahead and appreciate God. Let's appreciate God. Father, we appreciate you. We thank you for this opportunity. We thank you for the grace you've given to us from January to date. Thank you for supporting your purpose in our lives. Thank you for carrying us through. Thank you for upholding us. Thank you for your presence. Thank you because you have never left us. Father, we appreciate you. We give you all the glory. We give you all adoration. You have been faithful. You've been faithful to us, Lord. We appreciate you. You've been faithful, Lord. From the ages past. That is why your name, O Lord, is forever praised. You've been faithful to us. You've been faithful, Lord. From the ages past. Father, that is to why your name, the great I am, is forever praised. Father, you have been faithful to us. Your name is forever praised. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we have given thanks. Amen. Let's go. Let's. Uh, we are going to the worship. How many minutes am I giving, Ma? So I just. At least ten minutes. At least. Okay. 10 minutes. Yes, at least. <laughs> Which means it can go extra, but at least. <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay, let's just be in the act of worship. You are glorious, so glorious in your way. Father, you are glorious, you are glorious, so glorious in your ways. Yahweh, 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 Yahweh. Yahweh, Yahweh, you are glorious, so glorious in your ways. We sing Yahweh, 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 Yahweh. You are glorious, so glorious in your way. Sing, you are faithful, you are faithful, so faithful in your way. Father, you are merciful. You are merciful, so merciful in your way. Mm. Aura, you are the mighty God. Hallelujah. You are the glorious God. 
Everybody sing. Halagbara. Father, you are the mighty God. Father, we worship you. We glorify you. We worship you, oh God. We honor you, oh God. Father, we lift you high. Yes, hallelujah. God, we lift your name high. You are the great and mighty God. Hallelujah. You are the mighty man of war. Worship you, we adore you. Lord, we lift you high because you're faithful. Oh, yes, Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We adore you. Thank you, Lord. You reign, you reign, and I am king. Kadosh, Kadosh, your mighty honor. You reign, you reign, you reign, you reign, you reign, you reign. Worship you, 
Oh Lord God, we worship you. We worship you. We worship you. Father, we worship you. We worship you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. We worship you, Honorable Santaraba Sekele. We praise your name, oh God. Father, we worship you. We lift our hands to you. We worship you. We lift our hands to you. Father, we worship you. Yes, you Lord. are the mighty man of war. You are the man of oh, yes, You Lord. are the lily of the valley. Yes, Lord, Lord God, we worship mm. you. Father, we worship you. Mm. Lord, you reign forever. Mm. Oh God, you reign forever. Mm. We worship you. Yes, we worship you. We worship you. I feel my Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, Yeshua, we worship you. Yeah. Oh. You are mm. when mm. we call you, we will answer. Mm. Oh, yes, you are mm. when we call you, you deliver. There's no name, mm. no name. Greater than yours. Mm. Oh, there's no name, no name greater than yours. Mm. Yes, you yes. are. Yes, you are. Um. When we call you, you will answer. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, you are. Mm. We call you, you deliver. Mm. There's no name, mm. no name greater than yours. Mm. There's no name, mm. no name greater than yours. Father, there is no name greater than yours. Yes, you are. When we call you, you will answer. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, Father. When we call you, you deliver. There is no name. No name greater than yours. Yes, yes. No name greater than yours. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. There's no name. No name greater than yours. Mm. Father, we worship you. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. Hallelujah. Your name, we thank you for this awesome time in your presence, Father. We appreciate you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We worship you, Father. We give you praise in Jesus' mighty name. We have worship, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you amen. so much for that time of worship. Hallelujah. And for those that were not here when we started, God bless you, Sister Rose. Thank for you, those that were not here when we started, I was I was, um, I mentioned that you know I already said to God that God, I don't want to do anything again this year. I thought we were done with November, but God said no. Sometimes 
you know, the reason, one of the reasons why, why I, we said, okay, to start this is because we also hold ourselves or, or we strengthen ourselves in the place of prayer. And so that's why this prayer time has been put together. So just strengthen one another and pray for one another. Hallelujah. So this afternoon, the, few, the areas that I put in here that, that God dropped on my heart, but please, if God drops any other area in your heart, please feel free to share as well. So that gift to you are welcome, welcome, welcome. Okay, so if God drops any other area in your heart, so the areas that, I, that God laid on my heart were, you know, praying for our families, praying for our children, so families through marriage. So, and then praying for our children specifically, praying for our assignments, you know, that's what God has committed into us. And then praying for even ourselves, for strength even to keep going, for strength even to do the work that he commits, the assignments he commits into our hands, that we will not be tired, you know, we will not be weary even in doing this assignment. Hallelujah. And then if there's any other area, I know, and then just committing what God is going to have for us next year. You know, even as individuals, just asking God for, you know, for divine strategies. Daddy, Lord, what do you have for us? Is in his hands. So that's what we're going to be doing today. So we have, um, Safa Ikeb is going to be leading us in praying for our children. Dr. Adesa is going to be leading us in praying for our assignments, you know, talking about divine strategies. And other than that, I have, I'm going to be, one, actually, one thing that I didn't put in, in here, that God laid on my heart this morning as I sat here was resting in God. Pastor Eunice, you're welcome, man. Is resting in God, even in doing the assignment. Is the grace to even rest in him. But sometimes we believe that it's just our strength. Let's just keep going, going, going. But sometimes God is saying, no, rest in me. When you rest in, in me, guess what happens? You are able to be refreshed. When you rest in me, everything that you need to even run, is what is in me. So we're also going to be praying a few prayer points on that. Good evening, my good to have you here. So Sister Gift, I'm going to give you an assignment. You are here. So I'm going to ask if you please help us to pray for our marriages, praying for our marriages, because I always see women that are leading in one way or the other. The enemy often would have, the enemy would have, um, how would I put it? He will have his own plan. We have his own agenda. And we also, also often have to commit ourselves, committing a, a, one of those elders areas, even into God's hand. So let's start off with Sister Fehike. If you want to start off with praying for the children, then we'll have the goddess after that. We'll have Sister Gift, and then God will lead us as we pray. Hallelujah. Sister Fehike, are you ready for us? Yes, I am ready. I want to join on my other line because I think okay. this one is okay. breaking. Yeah, just one wow. minute. Um, but can everybody hear me very well? I just want to make sure it's not me. Okay. Okay, I think I have joined. I will, I will leave here. Okay. You are mute. Thank you very much. Can you hear me very well? Yes. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. We thank God. You know, we give God the praise for what He's doing in our midst. And thank you so much for um, giving me this privilege to pray for our children. And God bless you, Sister Rosalyn, um, for that time of worship. Yeah, Father, we give you all the praise. Let's just adore God tonight for the lives of our children once again. Things can never, can never be too much. Right, when we think about the three dimension of prayers, right, we remember that the first and the first dimension of prayer is thanksgiving. When Jesus, what did he do? You know, even when he wanted to break the bread, you know, he gave thanks. You know, when he wanted to share the wine, he gave thanks, right? You know, and that time he was even preparing to go to the cross, yet he was still giving thanks. So let us thank God tonight for our children. Father, we give you all the praise for the children that you, the Lord, has given us. Let us thank God for the privilege to carry these children you know, for good nine months, you know, and so to give that to them, to bring them to life, you know, so let us just thank God tonight. Father, we thank you for the grace that you've given unto us, you know, to be 
to be the, 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 the custodian of your kingdom. Because the Bible says that for the years, so far not the little ones to come, the Bible says for the years is the kingdom of God. They are the kingdom of God, right? And this is the reason why God told, Jesus told Nicodemus that if you want to, you know, if you, if for you to be born again, you have to be like a little child because these ones are the kingdom of God. So let us thank God for the grace to have these ones, you know, to nurture them, to care for them, we want to thank God for the responsibility. We want to thank God for trusting us because this is what God has done. He trusts us so much to give this ones unto us. So Father, we bless you tonight. We thank you for your grace. Father, we say be thou exalted. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. So let us look at this first scripture in um, Psalm 127, um, verse 3 to 5, that says that, Behold, children have the heritage from the Lord, the fruit of the womb a reward, like arrows in the hand of a warrior are the children of one's youth. Mm -hmm. Blessed is the man who fills his quiver with them. He shall not be put to shame when he speaks with his enemies in the gates. Yes, but in order for this to happen, in order for this to happen, it means that these children must have been taught of the Lord. There's a song I sing, you know, when I want to pray for my children. And I've taught them to sing it as well, to use it to pray. And it's like, as the dead panted for the water, so my soul longed after you. Hey, hey. You alone had my desire and I've come to worship you. Yes, you alone, you alone are my strength and shield. Now to the heart of your children, to you alone may my speed. Read yield, yes, Lord, and we know the rest of the song. And this is how you see that there are spirits, that there are art we, we yearn after the Lord. So we are going to pray tonight because that is the greatest gift that we can have for these children that they will thirst after God, that as the day panic, as the day panic after the water, that that is the same way the art of our children will thirst after God, that these children will be taught of the Lord, that as we are teaching them, that the Holy Spirit will begin to take over from there. We all see the things that are happening all around the world on social media. We've been seeing it. We've been seeing all what our children are doing. Our children are doing. So let us commit the art of, of our children into the hands of the Lord. Let us pray that their minds are renewed because the Bible says that be transformed by the renewal of your mind. Do we even understand that scripture? Renewal is a continuous process and transformation as well is a continuous process. It's not, it's, it's not something that is static. It's not something that happened once. It's not the, the only thing that we teach them that they will know. They need to keep learning and they will keep listening. But let us say that God, whatever it is, they hear. Let them be able to filter the one that is yours. Because these children, every day of their lives, they will learn your principles. They will know your principles. And they will be able to sit them in their lives, oh Lord, to make the right decisions to know the right path and to walk in it in the name of Jesus. Father, we commit the heart of our children unto your hands, O Lord. We declare in the name of Jesus that only you will this one serve. Only you will this one listen to. Only you will this one be submissive to. Only you will this one obey. Only you will this one rely on. Only you with this ones, oh Lord, trust in every day of their lives in the name of Jesus. It does not matter what they hear. Let us pray to God. It does not matter what they hear because sometimes we teach them things. They will go to school. Their teachers will say something else. The, many times my children will come and say, my friend said this. I will say yes, but sit down. Let me teach you. Let me tell you what the Bible says, that whatever they are saying to them, it does not matter. What matters is what the Holy Spirit is telling them, that every day 
of their lives, oh Lord, that we will receive the grace to teach them the right way, so that even when they are teaching them incorruptible, incorruptible, then they will stand with the incorruptible, which is Jesus. They will stand with him, and they will be able to say, yes, I know Jesus. I know that which is incorruptible. In the name of Jesus, oh Lord, the Bible says that train your child in the way that it should go, and that when he is old, they will not depart from it. Please, what is that way, parents? Do you even know that way that is true? Do we even understand that way that is true? And the interesting thing I have found out in the course of training my children is that the way that is true, the way that is right, differs with children. It is not the same way for child A, uh, the same way, and it won't be the same way for child A for child B. That is one thing I have learned. So we want to pray to God, Father, teach me, teach me to nurture my children in the right way. Teach me to bring them up in the right way. Teach me to train them up in the right way. Let me know what to say at all times. Let me know the response to give at all times. Let the Holy Spirit take over of my utterances, O Lord, to speak to my children in the name of Jesus. When it's supposed to be yes, let it be yes. When it's supposed to be no, let it be no. When it's supposed to, 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 to be wait, let me say wait in the name of Jesus. My Lord and my God, I declare and that when they now go out, because I have taught them the way of the Lord, begin to say to God that when they now go out to hear something that is contrary, Holy Spirit, take your place and bring things to their remembrance. Bring things to their remembrance. Everything that the Holy Spirit is teaching me to teach my children, when the time comes for them to remember and to make use of them, Father, be with them and bring it to their remembrance. Because the brain Jesus was going, he said, and I will send you the Spirit of the living God, the one that will teach you all things, the advocate, the one that will teach you all things and bring everything to your remembrance. That means the Holy Spirit is teaching us now as parents all things. And we now teach it to our children children. And when we teach it to them and it's time for them to remember, the Holy Spirit now bring it to their remembrance. It is only what we teach them that the Holy Spirit will bring to their remembrance. So my Lord, teach me to teach my child right. It does not matter how old your child is. They need training. They need guidance. They need direction. My Lord, I'm going to declare now that I will not fail. I will not fail. Over the lives of my children, I will not fail. I will not be guilty. In the name of Jesus, I will not be guilty. In the name of Jesus, no one shall say, she be that she be the mother is the one that is always praying. She be that's the mother that is always on Facebook saying this. She be she's the purpose midwife. She be she's the one that is always saying this creation, transformation, renewal of mind. How come our child, the life of our children are like this? That will never be our portion. That is not our portion. Jesus is our portion. Jesus is the portion of our children. In the mighty name of Jesus, we commit them into the hands of God. That these ones are for signs and wonders. These ones are for signs and wonders. The Bible says that once I am young, but now I am old. The Bible says I've never seen the righteous of all his children beg for bread. I declare concerning you parents tonight that you will not suffer over your children. You will not beg for bread over your children. The resources that you need, the wisdom, the knowledge and understand that you need to take care and to nurture them. The Lord will give them to you in abundance. In the name of Jesus, they will be renewed each day. They will be renewed each day. In the name of Jesus, you will not fail. The Bible says the path of the righteous shines brighter and brighter unto the perfect day of the Lord. I declare concerning your children, it is from one level of wisdom to another level of wisdom. It is from one level of knowledge to another level of knowledge. It's from one level of insight to another level of insight. It's from one level of truth to another level of truth. It's from one level of glory to another level of glory in the name of Jesus. Father, I declare so shall it be. And I declare above all, none of us shall be found guilty over our children. Our children shall not be found in a place of, 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 of death in the name of Jesus. We always say, ah, nobody will intimidate my children. Nobody must bully my children. We always pray, ah, eh, no, no, no bad gang. We do this to my children. What about our children? We are declared tonight. My children will not be a source of sorrow to another family. My children will not be a source of sorrow to another family. Instead, my children, they are source of joy. They are source of inspiration to another child and to another family in the 
name of Jesus. My children are signposts of righteousness in the name of Jesus. Declare tonight, my children shall not come to this world for nothing. They shall not come in vain. They'll come to this world to fulfill God's righteousness. They'll come to this world to fulfill purpose and destiny in the name of Jesus. They will know the way of the Lord for their lives and they will walk in it. They will understand their assignments on heart in the name of Jesus and they will not be weary and their hearts will not faint in the name of Jesus. Everything that they need, every resources they need, they receive in the name of Jesus and everything that we've not asked for tonight, Father, you know them. Father, give it to our children. Let it be well with them. Father, protect them from all evil. Make your face to shine upon them. The Bible says in Psalm 91 that that I shall see the salvation of the Lord in the land of the living. I will live and I will see the salvation of God. I declare unto you parents tonight that you will see the salvation of God through your children in the name of Jesus. Your ears over them will not hear evil. Your eyes will not see evil in the name of Jesus. In this land, you will not live in evil in the name of Jesus. It is well with us. It, will, it is well with us. Our children, they go now and they prosper through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you for that wonderful time of prayer. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Dr. Adesayo, we will have you, please, Ma. Thank you, everyone, for being here. I believe God is strengthening us in our inner man, even through those times of prayer, time of worship. Okay. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Good morning from Auckland, New Zealand. And um, thank you so much, uh, Pastor La, Ode, for giving me this opportunity to lead these prayers. Like you said, we're rounding up the year. The Lord has helped us, has given us strength, has given us wisdom. And even if we choose to praise Him today, to worship Him, it is more than you know, enough. So let us just begin to bless the name of God for the wisdom that he has given unto us before now. This is the last month of the year. Look at what we have gone through, you know, in, in the whole wide world. But how did we make it today? It's because of the wisdom that he has given unto us, the strategies that he has given unto us in our homes, at work, even in our ministry, it could only be God. So many of us who were not really a social media person, but when COVID came, God gave us wisdom. We could still spare, spread the good news. So let's begin to bless his name because he is God. Let's worship him for holding us even unto this day. It is his strategies that has made us not to be consumed. It is his wisdom that has made us not to be consumed. Let us worship him. Let us thank him. Let us bless him. Because it's our wisdom. It's our experience. It's our knowledge. It's our good judgment. Bible says, God, you know, um, is in the beginning, God. So it means it's the Alpha and Omega. So it means he knows all things. He can do all things. He is wise. He's actually the wisdom of God. In Jesus' mighty name. We are prayed. I've got here the quality of wisdom is the quality of having experience, knowledge, and good judgment, the quality of being wise. So let us just pray. Now, Father, give me the quality of having positive experience, sound knowledge, and good judgment, and let me be wise. Let us just praise that. Father, I pray that you give me even the quality of positive experience in the mighty name of Jesus. You give me sound knowledge and good judgment and the quality of being wise in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I trust you even for quality of quality experience. I trust you even for sound knowledge. I trust you for good judgment. I trust you for the quality of being wise. I cannot do it by myself. I have tried it. My PhD cannot help me. My master's cannot help me. The years that I have in the ministry cannot help me. I've been a wife for close to 30 years now, but I still see that I still have confusion and I have darkness concerning some areas of my life. Holy Spirit of God, 
Help me to have quality experience, quality positive experience. Let me have sound knowledge. Let me have good judgment. Let me have be the quality to be wise in the mighty name of Jesus. Job 28, 28 says, Behold the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. So let's begin to pray. I will fear you. My household will fear you. In all my assignment, I will fear you. In my assignment as a wife, as a mother, as a pastor, as a choir leader, in whatever, whatever capacity, Lord Almighty, cause me even to fear you. Because the Bible said, behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. Help me to fear you. Help me to fear you. Some of us, when we become pastor mommy, we become too arrogant. Nobody can correct us. Nobody can even touch us. Lord Almighty, help me, oh God. Let me fear you. Let me fear you because you say that your fear, that is wisdom. Cause me to fear you in all that you have committed unto my hands. Deuteronomy even says that you should remember the Lord your God because it's the one that gives us the power to make wealth. He's the one that gives me power to be a mother. He's the one that gives me power to be a wife. He's the one that gives me power to, uh, to, to, you know, in my profession, even in what I am do, I, I'm doing as a fragrance of influence. So what more can I do but to fear him? Cause my heart to fear you, O God, because that is wisdom. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Proverbs 14, 1 says, a wise woman builds her home, but a foolish one tears it down with her own hands. Ah, a wise woman builds that ministry. A wise, wise woman builds that church. <laughs> a wise, sometimes, you know, when I have this conversation, even when you're a pastor's wife, you begin to wonder, so what does it do? <laughs> what does it do? <laughs> I was listening to this uh, man of God. I think Pastor Kokwa is into marriage counseling. And by the time, you know, he broke down, you know, the uh, how, you know, our, our, our cognition as women, the, the capacity, it, that's coming from a man. And I think I'll listen to him more. He said no, the, the compartmentalization of a man's brain is just one. Everything is just one. But a woman, you know, you can juggle so many things. And that's why the Bible says a wise woman build her own home, but a foolish one. So you are going to pray, Holy Spirit, help me even to build my home. Everything that you have given unto me, get, help me remember that God himself is the chief architect. Begin to pray, help me, oh God, empower me by the Holy Spirit to be wise so I can build my home. I can build everything that you have committed into my heart, into my hands. I can build my marriage. I can build my church. I can build my ministry. I can build my business. I can even build myself. Help me, oh God. Help me, oh God, uh, to be a wise woman who builds a home. I will not tear what you have committed into my hands. I will not tear it down with my own hands. Help me, Oh God, fill me with the Holy Spirit because I know by myself I cannot do it. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Let's look at Eve. The Bible says that when the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it. Ah, and she gave some to her husband who was with her. Genesis 3 6. So in her domain, in her assignment, she did what she was not supposed to do because she thought it was the fruit that would give her wisdom. She didn't remember that she's made in the image of God and God says, ye are gods. So you don't necessarily need any fruit because ye are gods. You are made in the image of God and so you have the wisdom of God. So let's begin to pray. Whatever it is that is enticing me, that looks like that looks like, you know, like he says that it was pleasing to her, to her eyes. 
It is good for food and also desirable to gain wisdom. Whatever it is that is enticing me, whatever it is that is present that is poison, that is presenting himself to be food, that 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 wants to pretend, you know, it's even to be wisdom. Father, okay, give me the wisdom to know and to see and also to walk away from such in the mighty name of Jesus. I will not be tempted in the mighty name of Jesus. <laughs> you will help me to take charge of my eye. You will help me to take charge of my appetite. You will help me, oh God. Whatever it is that is not you, I will not go after it. I will not test after it. I will not pant after it. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. James 1, 5 says, if any of you lack wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault and it will be given unto you. We lack wisdom. I lack wisdom. For about three days ago now, my life has been so confused about something that happened. And I've just been praying, but I have mercy. Fill me with the Holy Spirit. Fill me with your wisdom. Fill my husband with the Holy Spirit. That has been my cry for the last three days. So the Bible says, if you lack wisdom, I don't know if you are here. <laughs> you have enough. <laughs> you may not ask. But me, I lack wisdom. Oh, I lack wisdom. So let's begin to ask God. But I pray that you will crown me with wisdom in the mighty name of Jesus, because you says that you don't find fault and that you will give it unto me. Help me, oh God. Give me wisdom, oh God. Wisdom is the principal thing. Help me, oh God. I depend on you, oh God. I lean on you, oh God. How to relate with my husband, how to relate with my children. I have three children by the grace of God. They are different. Lord, help me. God has started giving me grandchildren now. How do I deal with them? How do I, what legacy am I going to give, give to these grandchildren. When I look to them, they look so innocent. They believe whatever I tell them. Help me, oh God. Grant me wisdom even to be a pastor's wife. Grant me wisdom even to be mommy yard. I grant me wisdom in fragrance of influence. Grant me wisdom even in all the businesses that you have committed into me. Even in dealing with all the children, biological children, spiritual children that you have given unto me. Give me wisdom in the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus will pray. Proverbs 4, 5 to, 5 to 7 says, get wisdom, get understanding. Do not forget my words or turn away from them. Do not forsake wisdom and she will protect you. Love her and she will watch over you. The beginning of wisdom is this, get wisdom. Father, I choose to get wisdom today because uh, if I get wisdom, I will get understanding. It says, uh, help me, oh God, to, to spend time even with you. Let me let me meditate in your word, oh God. It is in you that I can find my wisdom. I will not be a lazy Bible reader this year in the mighty name of Jesus. I will seek after you. I will watch I will, I will watch on your, uh, on your word. I will sit on your word. I will wait on your word. I will watch, I will wait, uh, waiting for what you are going to say, even in this year, because your word is life, uh, your word is wisdom. I will not forsake wisdom because it will protect me. Get me to love wisdom in the mighty name of Jesus so that she can watch over me. The beginning of wisdom is this, uh, get wisdom. Though it costs all you have, uh, get it. Help you, oh God, to pay the price for wisdom in Jesus' mighty name. We have prayed. We yeah, let's have yeah. a look at let's have a look at some women who succeeded in their yeah. assignment. Luke one twenty four says, after this is, is a wife Elizabeth became pregnant for five months and she remained in seclusion. Mm, that is wisdom. This is somebody who had been barren all her life, and God answered her prayers. How do we conceal things? The fruit that just God has just given unto us. Most of us, the miracle is not, it's not even ripe. We have shared it with the whole world. I'm not saying don't share what God is telling you, but who are you sharing with? So let us begin to pray. 
just like you helped Elizabeth, even to be wise in her calling. Help me, oh God, to know what is do, what, what to do, what, you know, at time. Help me, oh God. You are the one that helped our mother Elizabeth. Help me, oh God. Help me, oh God. Help me, oh God. The Bible says that she went, she remained in seclusion for five months. What is it that you are revealing that you should not be revealing right now? Help me, oh God. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Hmm. Let's look, even at Mary, the mother of Jesus. So when all this prophecy was told her, uh, but Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her hearts. This is wisdom, isn't it? Isn't it? Isn't it? That's Luke 2, 19. And may the Lord help us even to, to gain wisdom at all costs in the mighty name of Jesus. Even when we look at Mary, you know, and the alabaster box. She anointed the body of Jesus because she knew she was, she had intuition, intuition. She knew she had intuition. Even when the other disciples did not accept, she knew and she did the needful. Lord Almighty Father, let me be, let me have intuition. That is the inner voice. That is that is that that is the nurturing voice. The Bible says that as you go, that you are going to hear a voice behind you that says, "This is the way. Follow it." Help me, oh God, to hear your voice. Help me, oh God, to know your voice. The Bible says that He is a good shepherd, huh? and He knows, you know, His sheep, and we are His sheep. We also know Him, and we recognize His voice. Help me to recognize your voice, oh God, when you are speaking with me. Help me to recognize your voice, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. I am addicted to this one that I'm going to say because by the grace of God, one of my children, <laughs> you know, is an artist. So Exodus 31, 1 to 5 says, then the Lord spoke to Moses saying, see, I have called by name Bazalil, the son of Uri, the son of Ur, and I have filled him with the spirit of God in wisdom in understanding, in knowledge, in all manner of workmanship, uh, to design artistic, if this is your lady, I don't know how many minutes I have, maybe we're just going to end here today, you know, to design artistic work, to work in gold, in silver, in bronze, in cutting jewels for setting, in carving wood, and to work in all manner of workmanship. I think this, this round it up for us, isn't it, mommy? Okay, so please, I want you to take this time to really pray. It says that I fill him with the spirit of God in wisdom. Begin to ask that the Lord will fill you with his spirit in wisdom, in understanding, in knowledge, in all manner of workmanship, to design artistic work, to work in gold, in silver, in bronze, in cutting jewels for setting, in carving wood, and to work in all manner of workmanship. As I am saying it, begin to repeat it. And God has filled you, put your name there. God has filled Adesayo with the spirit of God in wisdom, in understanding, in knowledge, and in all manner of workmanship to design artistic works, to work in gold, in silver, in bronze, in cutting jewels for setting, in cutting wood, to work in all manner of workmanship. Rama, we pray in the spirit. Rama, stand up I have to design artistic works, to work in gold and silver, in bronze, in cutting jewels for setting, in carving wood and to work in all manner of workmanship. 
Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Is my, is my time done, mommy? Yeah. Yes, ma. Yes, ma. Okay. Thank Father, you, Father. That was powerful. Yes, ma. Father, Father, we exalt your name. Mm. We we'll give you praise. We we'll give you adoration. Mm. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God, mm. because you are God of wisdom. Mm. You will show us repeatedly. Jesus is the wisdom of God. We cannot go into this new year without you. In fact, for somebody like me, I am paralyzed already. And mm -hmm. thank you, Holy Spirit of God, even for initiating this prayer. Because now I have courage that I'm not going in my own wisdom. I'm not going in my power, in my knowledge. Holy Spirit of God, I ask that you envelope myself and my sister, even on this platform, with your heavenly wisdom, so that we can excel in all that you have committed into our hands. Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank Amen. you so much. Wow. Thank you so much, ma. God bless you, ma. Thank you. Sister Gift, you are up. We're praying for our marriages. Sister Gift, are you ready for us? Sister Gift? Yes, ma, yeah. Good to see your beautiful face. <laughs> oh, thank you. Um, thank you very much, ma, for this opportunity. And thank you all the people that have led. It's been a wonderful session. Um, before, I just want us to thank God for our marriages. The Bible instructed, it says, and a man shall leave his mother and father and cleave to his wife, and they shall become one. I just want us to thank God for our marriages. There are so many marriages we can know. If we have been hearing it, that there are so many divorces all over the world. But this God has kept our marriages. Our sisters who are not here, their marriage has saved. The Lord has been there for us. He has allowed love to abide in us. He has made us peaceful in our home. He has given us peace in our home. That we are not troubled. Yes, challenges may come as part of life, but God has been faithful. So I just want us to thank God for our marriages. Thank God for your husband. Thank God for the children. Sometimes there, there can be love between a man and a husband, but the children will scatter things. But I just want us to thank God that this has not been our portion. The Lord has been gracious to us. He's been faithful to us. He has given us grace to enjoy our marriages and we will continue to enjoy it. Let's magnify him because he alone can do this. The left for the devil, the Bible made us to understand that if it's not the will of God, that where we would have been, if it is not the will of God, where would our marriages would have been by now? It is by his grace, it's by his love. Let's give him thanks, let's give him glory. Father, we worship you. We thank you for our marriages. We thank you for our home. We thank you for all you are doing in our life. All you have averted, the fight the quarrel, for that you have bring peace into our home. Father, we bless your name. We worship you, Jesus. You are a faithful God. Thank you for the love that you have given unto us. Thank you for the love that you have made to abide in our homes. Thank you for the grace you have given unto us to enjoy a peaceful marriage. We are not divorced. Yes, you may be part of it, but Lord, in, in, in all, we are giving you thanks because you are a faithful God. Blessed be your holy name, Jesus. Hallowed be your name, Lord, Lord, we worship you, we exalt you, we magnify your name. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. I want us to, in that mode, I want us to also pray for love and joy in our marriages. The Bible says that love covered all multiple of sins. So I want us to tap to pray and say, Lord, in my home, in my sister's home, Lord, your love, joy peace, happiness will continue to abide in the name of Jesus. Lord, in your presence, we renew our wholeheartedness choice to love. Bless our home, oh Lord. Lord, bless our home with joy. Bless our home with peace. Bless our home with happiness. This will not be lacking our home. Daily we will experience joy. Daily we will experience peace. Daily we experience love in order to cover all multiple of sin. Sin that will, will, will no, it, because the Bible says that love forgives, that this will be the portion that every one of us, our sisters that are not here, they will also experience that peace, that serenity, that joy in their homes. In the name of Jesus, Father, we pray, oh Lord, that in our homes, oh Lord, we decree that love 
peace, joy, happiness will not diminish in the name of Jesus. We will continue to enjoy hope. We will continue to enjoy love. We will continue to enjoy your goodness in our homes in the name of Jesus. Every plans of the enemy to destroy our homes, Lord, we cancel it because your love, oh Lord, we are bind in our home. Your peace, oh Lord, we are bind in our home. Your joy, oh Lord, we are bind in our home. Your your happiness we are abiding in our home we will not suffer any 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 unpleasant situation in our home in the name of jesus thank you precious father be that resorted be that magnified for in jesus name we are praying we're going to be praying for our health for our, our health and the health of our spouse in our marriage we're going to be praying and say lord the book of Isaiah chapter 53 verse 4 says, but he who wounded for, he, but he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his strife, we are healed. So we're going to be praying and say, Lord, we thank you for the divine health in our physical body, in our spiritual body, in our marriage. Lord, we pray that you will make known to us anything that we are doing that does not directly correct with healthy living, our body, our soul, our spirit. Lord, give us the strength to honor you through our bodies as we are at the temple of you, oh Lord. Give us wisdom to continually build a healthy spiritual life. Our marriages with you, our, our marriage with you, at the center of it all. Father, help us, Lord, to remember the sacrifice. He says, Lord, but he says, but he strike. We are here. That is the sacrifice. Therefore, we're gonna be praying and say, Lord, we pray for healing. We pray for sound mind. We pray for spiritual, physical, our physical body, our spiritual life, our marriages. We will continue to enjoy sound health in the name of Jesus. No sickness. No no trouble, no challenges. Every challenge that we might have experienced or that is coming our way, that the Lord will avert it in the name of Jesus. We will continue to enjoy sound health in our home. To the glory of his name. Our body, our spouse body, they are covered with the blood of Jesus. No weapon that will form against us shall prosper. And every tongue that rises against us is condemned in the name of Jesus. Thank you, precious Father. Be that exalted, be that magnified. For in Jesus' name, we are afraid. Amen. Um, Ephesians chapter 5 verse 31 says, for this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife and the two will become one flesh. I want us to pray for intimacy in our marriages that God will help us to strengthen the bond of physical and spiritual intimacy in our marriages in the name of Jesus that we are thankful that he has called us husband and wife to intimate with us first and intimate with one another, that God will help us, that our behavior in any way, that Lord will continually remember that we are one in the body, in the we are one as husband and wife, that God will continue in this way, when we remember that when offense comes, when whatever it is, the Lord will help us to forgive and continue to unite together. So I want us to pray and say, Lord, help us, oh Lord, that our marriages will continue to enjoy a good intimacy in the name of Jesus. Every division of the enemy that the Lord will cancel it, the Lord will destroy it in the name of Jesus. We will not experience division. Intimacy will continue to bind us together to the glory of his name. Thank you, precious Father. Be that exalted, be that magnified. Lord, we exalt you. We magnify your name, O oh Lord, because you are a good God. Finally, I just want us to pray for forgiveness in our marriages. The Bible says that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just, and he will forgive us our sin and purify us from all unrighteousness. That's from First John chapter 1, verse 9. I want us to pray and say, Lord, Heavenly Father, as we strive to continually build our strong marriages, Lord, help us to forgive one another for things that may fault or offend us in the name of Jesus, that the Lord will help forgiveness will be our portion in the name of Jesus. We will not, the devil will not help, will not make us remember any offense that has happened 10 years ago. I, I mommy, I, mommy, Adejumo used to say, oh, women that when they are crying, they will cry and say, oh, 10 years ago, I'm crying because 10 years ago you, you, of your cheating. I'm crying 10 years ago of your infidelity. But this will not be her portion of any one of us on this line or anyone in the, 
in the group in the name of Jesus who have that heart to accept, heart to forgive, heart to, to let go in the name of Jesus. Same for our spouse that they will forgive. They will not hold grudges of any kind in the name of Jesus. We will all live and forgive in, in our marriages to the glory of his name. Thank you, precious Father. Be thou exalted because you are faithful God. Thank you, our Redeemer. Immortal and everlasting King. Father, we just want to thank you for the few minutes, few seconds we, we are able to pray for our marriage. We know there are many things we ought to pray for, but Lord, we trust in you. We believe you say we should have. And another encouragement was when the, uh, that the Holy Spirit will help us to intercede for us. Father, wherever we could not remember, wherever we, we have missed out of this prayer, Father, King of glory, we pray, oh Lord, that you, oh Lord, will do exceedingly more than what we have prayed. Father, our marriage is in you. You are the foundation of our marriage. And therefore, we trust in you that there will be no division, there will be no separation, there will be no trouble, there will be no fight. Even when it comes, so Lord, let it bind us more together to our spouses in the name of Jesus. We will continue to enjoy love, peace, and happiness in our home. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Be that resorted, be that magnified. Thank you, oh Lord, because we will not, because we are here to thank you for what you have done in 2021 in our marriages. And we will also thank you, oh Lord, for 2022, because we know we are more than conqueror. Thank you, precious Father. Be that resorted. For in Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. God bless you abundantly. Thank you, everyone that has prayed. I just want to pray, I think, about two things, and then we'll get Pastor Eunice to just thank God for, you know, just to round up everything and just pray the pray, closing prayer. But I want to pray. I said, God dropped in my heart to rest. I know, and I was thinking, rest, Lord, why rest? <laughs> and you know, one place I was reading, he said, rest in the Lord refers to a spiritual, you know, is is a, a spiritual rest, you know, from sometimes from confusion, from worry, from stress, from useless human effort. You know, as women, there's always plenty of things going on in our minds. And so resting in God is so necessary. Really, I like, I, I don't know, maybe it's me, but I find like one of my children was asking me, I was telling somebody this, this month, one of my children was asking me, oh, mommy, it's going to be Christmas. Are you excited? And in one mind, I was like, yes, I am. But on the other side, I was thinking, it's the end of another, it's the end of a year. So what, what that brings to you is now you now begin to reflect. And sometimes in the place of reflecting, you are thinking, ah, God, maybe I should have done this one better. Ah, okay, ma, okay, ma. God bless you. <laughs> okay, God bless you. So sometimes you'll be thinking, ah, maybe I should have done this better. Maybe I shouldn't have done that. I know. And sometimes it brings anxiety. And so I just want us to just hold on to, I'm going to read from Hebrews chapter 4, verses 8 to 11, quickly, as we, we're going to round up after this. And I, I'm reading TPT version, but Hebrews 4, 9, 8 to 11 says, Now, if this promise of rest was fulfilled when Joshua brought the people into the land, God wouldn't have spoken later of another rest yet to come. So we conclude that there is still a full and complete Sabbath rest, waiting for believers to experience Verse 10 in my own version, it says, as we enter into God's faith rest life, we cease from our own works, just as God celebrates his finished works and rest in them. So then we must be eager to experience this faith rest life so that no one falls short by following the same pattern of doubt and unbelief. So what God was simply saying there was that, it is we must be eager to enter into to the place of resting in him. Just like the Bible says in Philippians 4, 6, and 7, that be anxious for nothing, but everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, make your request known unto him. So I just want us to be encouraged that even as we come to the end of one year, looking into another year, rather than getting into that place of anxiety, resting in him means that we begin to thank him for all that he has done. I tell you, brother, when you say that you don't have shoes, this is someone that doesn't have legs. What do you begin to do? Thank you, Lord, because I have, at least I have, I have legs. I might not have shoes. That's what exactly what God is saying here. That we need to enter into that place of intentionally take, thanking God for what he has done in our homes, what he has done in your life, what he has done from January till now. And as we begin to thank him for all he has helped us to do, then we can rest in what he plans for us, even for 2022. Hallelujah. 
And so that is an, it was an encouragement. God just reminded me and I said, no, I'm going to share this to remind somebody else as well. That, and then verse seven of Philippians 4 often says that, and then the peace of God that passes all understanding will fill our hearts and minds. So when we say, Lord, we enter into that rest, he now fills our heart with peace. And so today, I just want us to just in one minute, just say, Father, Lord, I choose. And I, I believe that rest is a choice because anxiety will come for some so many reasons. But we must choose to say, no, faith rest life just means I have faith in this God. I will rest in him. I will rest in him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly. Even what I don't even know how he's going to do it. But I choose to rest in you. So this is to Just lift up your voice and say, Father Lord, I choose to rest in your in you. I choose to rest in your ability. I choose to rest in what you are able to do. I might not know how you are going to do this situation that I have at hand, but I will rest in you. I will I put my faith in you. You are the one that we look at. You are the one that has been helping us. Daddy Lord, in all our assignments, you are the one that has been helping us. In our homes, you are the one that has been helping us. So this is the Lord. We choose to rest. In your, in, in your ability, not what we are able to do by ourselves. Even in our assignments in the church, our assignments in the secular, our assignments in every area God has called us to, we choose to rest in your promises. This choice is a choice to rest in God's promises. The Bible says that the, the Israelites did not enter the promise. Why? Because they did not mix their faith with work. They did not mix they, they, you know, they, they were doubting God's ability, but today we say we will not doubt your ability. We would rest in your promises. We rest in what Jesus has done. We rest in the finished works of the cross. We rest in God, able to help us. No matter what God is calling you to do, this afternoon, choose to rest in God's ability to help you do it. That project that you don't even know how to, God says, rest in me. I will show you how. Rest in me. I will give you the strategy. Just like when my little one prayed in Exodus 31, rest in me and I will show you. Rest in me and I will help you. Rest in me and I will equip you. Rest in me and I will open your eyes to the opportunities I have given you to do it. Rest in me and I will make all things available to you. This afternoon, Lord, we choose to rest in you. We receive, Lord, grace to rest in you in all that you are calling us to do. Even in 2022, even from this time, up to 2022, the things that you will lay in our hearts and we don't even know how, we rest in you. We rest in your ability. We rest in your wisdom. We rest in divine, you know, in, in your ability to help us, to show us, to make us, on, give us understanding in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The second thing I wanted to read is from Jeremiah chapter 31. I want us to pray for his refreshing. Hallelujah. His refreshing. As women in, in ministry, you know, in leadership in one form or another, often we get weary, especially, you know, we've gone through the year and this time, sometimes you, I don't know if you are, maybe it's just me, sometimes you just feel the weariness. But this afternoon we're gonna say, no, 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 no. We are gonna just switch to the supernatural. Jeremiah chapter 31 and verse 25. I, and then I just have one more verse and then we are done. Jeremiah 31, 25. Jeremiah 31, I'm reading AMP. He says, for I fully satisfy the weary soul and I replenish every languishing and sorrowful person. I fully, that's my, my version, I fully satisfy the weary soul. God is the one that fully satisfies the weary soul. And so we want to ask that the Lord will refresh each and every one of it. Every one of us, hallelujah. That the Lord will refresh us. The, the, the Bible uh, message version says, I refresh tired bodies. I restore tired souls. Ah, hallelujah. Somebody hear that. I refresh tired bodies. I'll restore tired souls. So this afternoon, we just commit every, let's commit each other into the hands of the Lord. That, Lord, we have been working from January until this time. So now we get to the end of the year and we are just tired in our spirit, in our soul. We are weary. But God is saying in Jeremiah 21, 31, 25. I'll refresh tired, soul, tired bodies. I'll restore 
tired souls. Thy Lord, we ask for a restore, restoration. We ask for a refreshing. This after, let's pray for our sisters. Let's pray for ourselves. Thy Lord, let there be a refreshing in our spirit, man. Let there be a refreshing. Let there be a refreshing, a restoring. Thy Lord, even as we prepare to go into a new year to start afresh, Thy Lord, refresh us. Even as we're in the position of leadership, whereby we are doing so much. We have our homes. We have our jobs. We have, the, you know, the ministry. We have our assignments. Thy Lord, refresh every one of us. For every, for, for some people, it's just emotional, sitting right there in our brains. For some people, it is physical refreshing. For some people, it is spiritual refreshing. But Daddy, whatever we might need, Daddy Lord, we ask, Lord, that you will refresh us. Every form of tiredness, we just say, Father Lord, we just ask for your refreshing upon us, even right now. Refresh our spirit, man. Daddy Lord, refresh our soul. Refresh us physically. Let, let there be a rejuvenation in our, our, in, our, in, our, in our soul. Let there be a rejuve, rejuve, rejuvenation physically, Lord. Let us get a new bout of energy Lord, even at this time, as we get into your word, getting ready for the new year, Lord, thy Lord, begin to refresh us, begin to show us what you want us to do, begin to cause us to catch, Lord, that Lord, uh, cause, cause your strength to, to be re revealed, your strength, Lord, to be released upon us. Thy Lord, we say we, we, we tap into your strength, like right now. But we say it's not by power, it's not by might, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Thy Lord, we receive a refreshing, Lord, in our spirit, man. We re re receive a, a refreshing, Lord, for time. Tiredness, Lord, for weariness, we receive a refreshing in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I want to read Zephaniah chapter 3 and Pastor Wumi, you're welcome. Ma. Zephaniah 3 and verse 17. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me look at it properly. I'm reading the right sure I'm reading the right thing. <laughs> Zephaniah chapter 3. Hallelujah. Oh, we are almost done. Okay. Okay, yes. Zephaniah 317 is just is a word of encouragement to us, even as we prep, you know, for the new year. As we prep as individuals, as we prep as, you know, as women that God has put in the place of leadership. The Bible says there. The Lord your God, I'm reading AMP, the Lord your God is in your midst, a warrior who saves. He will rejoice over you with joy. He will be quiet in his love, making no mention of your passes. He will rejoice over you with shouts of joy. Hallelujah. So as he restores us, he gives us it. I, I, don't, I just think this is the word that God is giving us. He says, <coughs> he's, he's in your midst. He is in our midst, which means no matter what it is, well, no matter what it is that you achieve or you haven't achieved, say, the Lord is in our midst. He's just saying, I am in your midst to do more. I am in your ways to, to restore you. I am in your ways to help you. I am rejoicing over you with joy. That Lord, we just thank you for every woman, even connected to this to this community that you, we thank you, Lord, because you are in the midst of us. You are rejoicing over us with joy. Thy Lord, you are quiet. Your Lord, you are rejoicing over us with shouts of joy. Hallelujah. He is rejoicing over us with shouts of joy. Hallelujah. He is rejoicing over us with shouts of joy. Hallelujah. A message version says, Jerusalem will be told, don't be afraid, dear Zion. Don't despair. Your God is present among you. A strong warrior there to save you he is present among us. Hallelujah. Let's never forget, even when we feel like weariness, Daddy Lord, thank you because you are in the midst of us. We thank you for your joy. Let's just thank him for joy. Daddy Lord, we say that Lord. And we actually want to speak for that to anyone right now whereby the enemy is coming against him in the area of joy. Instead, he's bringing anxiety. Instead, he's bringing storms. Instead, he's bringing turmoil. Then, Lord, we begin to pray. Let there be an exchange, Lord, for every one of our sisters, for every one of us. We decree joy. <clears throat> Joy overflow in our lives, joy overflow in our home, joy overflow on every side for each one of us in the name of Jesus. Then, Lord, as we as we as we receive a refreshing, we decrease streams of joy begin to flow like never before. Streams of joy, Father Lord, even in this is streams of joy, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And I leave you with this verse. Hallelujah. Isaiah 46, 9 to 11. I leave you with this verse. Hallelujah. This is our closing verse. Hallelujah. Isaiah 46, 
9 to 11, Isaiah 46, 9 to 11. Okay. Hallelujah. Is, is it Isaiah 46, 9 to 11? He says, remember carefully the former things which I did from ages past, for I am God. There is no other, there is no one else. I am God and there is no one like me, declaring the end and the results from the beginning. And from ancient times, the things which have not yet been done. They have not yet been done. He, there are things that he's saying they have not yet been done. Saying my purpose will be established and I will do all that pleases me and fulfills my purpose. Calling a bird of prey from the east, from a far country, the man Cyrus of my purpose. Truly I have spoken, truly I will bring it to pass. I have planned it, be assured, I will do it. And why am I reading that verse? Because God is saying everything he has spoken concerning us, it will be done. We all just need to do what? We just need to rest in him. So that it, this morning, this evening, this afternoon, Lord, we just, we just say that, Lord, we choose rest. As women in leadership, we choose to rest in you. Thank you, Father, for how you have started with us. Thank you, Lord, for all that you have done for us this year. Thank you, Lord, for how good you have been to us in our lives, in our ministries, Lord, in our husbands' lives, in all that you have committed into our hands. Daddy, we give you praise. We give you glory. We thank you, Lord. Daddy, even as we get ready, Lord, as we pray for a new year, we thank you, Lord, Daddy, because you still have much more ahead of us. And we say we will rest in you. We rest in all that you are able to do. We say not by power, not by might, not what we can do by ourselves, but Lord, what you are able to do in our lives. We thank you, Daddy, because come 2022, Lord, much more is what you are doing in our lives. But Daddy, as we rest in you, we receive it. As we rest in you, we receive every promise you have put our name on. We receive every promise. I thank you for every woman of God connected to this platform. I thank you for our lives. I thank you for our family. I thank you for all that concerns us. Thy Lord, we thank you, Father, oh Lord, because you will continue to be in the midst of us. Thy Lord, thank you for shouts of joy we continue in our homes. Shouts of joy we continue continuing every ministry connected even to this platform. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we give you praise. We thank you, Lord, for in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, we pray. Hallelujah. Okay, that is our prayer Amen. for tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, everyone that stayed on. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you, everyone that prayed. Thank you so much. It was such a blessing to have all of us praying. And as we go into a new year, God is said to do phenomenal things beyond our comprehension in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Have a wonderful night for those going to bed. For those of us that are still there, have the rest of our day. For those that are just waking up, New Zealand, <laughs> Pastor Wumi, we are still here. Those Euro people, Nigeria people, good night. God bless you. The Lord bless you abundantly. Good morning. Amen. Good night. Merry Christmas. Good night. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas in advance. Yeah, God bless you. Thank you so much, everyone. God bless you. And thank you, Pastor Labode, for. Yeah. <laughs> oh, glory to God, ma. Yes. For looking after <laughs> us this year. God bless you, ma. Yes, ma. Good night, Thank everybody. You Thank so you, much. Sister Rose, Sister yes. Gib, Dr. Yeah. Alisa, your staff. Thank, Thank you me. so much. God bless you. Yeah. Yes. Bye. Okay, bye. You're welcome. Pastor Wumi. I, we can see your wave. We know you can't talk, but we can see your wave. God bless you, ma. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night, Sister Rose. God bless you. Good night. Good night, mommy. Good night, ma. Good night.